good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. This is Abhinav Joshi. I'm a senior manager in the OpenShift uh, group at Red Hat, and I have over 20 years of industry experience in a number of roles on both the customer side as well as on the vendor side. In my current role at Red Hat, my team focuses on developing and evangelizing the value of Red Hat OpenShift hybrid cloud platform for cloud native workloads such as AI ML, data analytics, databases, programming languages uh, such as Java, Python, and so on. Joining me today is Inanj uh, Chakilolu, Director for AI Data Analytics and Data Science at Turkcell. Operating within Turkey and internationally, Turkcell currently serves close to 48 million customers with a wide range of communication and digital service offerings. Over to you, Inanj, to tell us how Turkcell democratizes data science and accelerates the AI innovation to transform the customer experience. Hello, my name is Inan Chakrolu. As Abhinav said, I am working as Director of Data Science, Artificial Intelligence and Analytical Solutions at Turkcell. It has been already 22 years career in Turkcell. Today, I'm going to talk about uh, Turkcell AI use cases, how we accomplished and what we accomplished and the, our partnership with Red Hat and what we gain actually Red Hat. Talking about the data science and the AI, actually Turkcell has been working with the data since it started its operations. We have been using analytical models and the predictive models for last two decades, and uh, it's for core operations basically. And as you can imagine, any kind of activity around our customer, we can we use to utilize our models. New acquisition, churn, propensity, product switch, uh, risk score calculations, and so on. Uh, we are trying to make sense of our customer journey across the channels by data also. And this is the data science part, as we call it. When it comes to industrial AI side, story is rather new, actually. Three years ago, we established our core AI team, which was intended to focus on the industrial AI solutions. What I mean by the industrial AI solutions, we actually group our solutions into several pillars. Uh, one main part of the pillar is the computer vision. Uh, what I mean with the computer vision is uh, actually the steady and the streaming images. I mean, the both videos and the pictures and the photo analysis. And the NLP technology is another important pillar for us. With the NLP technologies, we include text analytics, speech analytics with the speech to text and the text to speech models. And we are actually very powerful in Turkish language. We uh, created quite powerful NLP engine in Turkish language, and even we created our own AI voice. Chatbots, it is also a part of NLP technologies. We created a chatbot, even a platform uh, for the creation of new chatbots. We have smart RPA solutions. We are active on the autonomous cars and the in-vehicle AI applications. And also the health industry is one of the, our key pillars that we are focusing on. Today, I'm going to talk about some uh, concrete, tangible examples and the use cases that we apply our AI technologies. And uh, I'm talking about uh, how, I, how we utilize our platforms and the use cases. Here it comes. This is digital onboarding. Uh, digital onboarding is one of major use cases that we apply our AI technology. We have a self-service application called Do. It is a customer self-service application, and it enables our customer to perform any kind of subscription activity and the service operations related with their lifecycle and with their, their, their subscriptions. Uh, also, we are utilizing our self-service applications too to allow our new customers to start their subscri subscription without involving any the, uh, any involvement uh, on the call center side and the dealer side. How it works, our AI automatically detects the ID of the customer and it's captured by the camera and it captures the image, I mean, it captures the photo on the ID and it captures the, some uh, related fields on the ID like name and the surname. Then we ask our customers to uh, have a selfie on their phone and we match this selfie with the identity photo. Also, we got, uh, we using the OCR, we got the name and the surname information, and we ask our subscriber to confirm their subscriptions, saying that, okay, I confirm the subscriptions, and we analyzing the voice, and we confirm the confirmation of the subscriptions. 
which kind of AI services that we are using, which kind of AI actually use cases that we are applying, computer vision, OCR, speech-to-text model, and the NLP technologies are using for that specific use case. Another lovely use case is, uh, it's also the, our AI and the vision technologies apply. It's a special campaign. We call it uh, in Turkish language, Gülümse uh, Gülümset. It means in English, smile and to make you smile. It's a special campaign. Uh, in that campaign, AI, AI, our AI service detects your, your face, uh, detects your smile, rate your smile, and based on these ratings, it gives you something. It can be a data package, it can be uh, some donation for animal or the tree plantation. Uh, anything depends on your use case, it is providing. We did something special for Abhinav. We got his face photos and we apply our technology. This is a nice smile. But we had better one. This is a smile for donation of the three gigabytes. And this is the best one. And our AI application rates this as five gigabytes. This is Next just- Next time I need to smile more. Yeah, <laughs> you should. Yeah. Uh, I will talk about later. The essence behind this technology is for each use cases, we don't develop the same code and the same scenario over and over again. I mean, this is a cloud native application uh, it is working on the public cloud and it is available to open up anywhere I mean, in, in the world. We started this kind of service in Turkey and uh, using the OpenShift and our cloud native platform, we opened this capability to other countries, other subsidiaries of Turkcell. Another scenario, it's a Lifebox service. This is a service that you can upload some documents, some videos, some uh, photos uh, to the cloud. It is quite similar to Google Cloud or the Apple Cloud. There is a such kind of a service of TurkSat. And we created a nice feature for that service. This feature rates your photo and to select the ones which can possibly get higher ratings if you upload them on the internet or Instagram. Another use case, fraud detection on online trainings and online exams. As you all know, our life quite changed in that up on, the, on, 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 on the pandemic. And all our life activities already changed or altered uh, and digitized actually. And the, we, did, uh, we, we thought about the, how we could apply our AI technology on the trainings and on the exam. And the, we found out like this, we apply our AI face recognition technology and the computer vision capabilities and system detects your photo takes your selfie, match with the identification, and the during the trainings or the exam, uh, continues to check your availability and your presence, uh, whether you are online, connected, and doing the desirable things. If something undesirable uh, detected, the system creates alarm and reports about your activity on the exam, and also it creates a detailed report about the desired ones, and the undesired moments. Um, we are trying to apply our AI technology and AI capabilities uh, in terms of any kind of business that Tuxel is active. Uh, actually, I should talk about first that the, as Tuxel, we no longer define Tuxel our, uh, ourselves as a, a core telco company. We rather started to express ourselves as a technology and digital service provider. In line with that positioning, in positioning, we have several digital services and OTT services. Uh, we have our own TV service, we have our own um, uh, music service, online magazine service, and with all these services, they, they, they contain content. And we are trying to enrich our services with the AI capabilities. Uh, one example is the NLP and the text-to-speech capabilities. Uh, as I said at the beginning of the presentation, we created our own AI voice and uh, uh, it is artificial, but the pretty close to a real human voice. I mean, it is not li like an airport announcements. And the, our AI voice can vocalize any kind of written message uh, into digital format and the, into uh, spoken format. So we applied this technology in the uh, digital magazine service as well as in the uh, uh, IVR announcements. 
And uh, now we are we have ability to convert any kind of text into the speech using the Turkish language. Another nice example is uh, HR based AI based HR interviews. Actually, Turkcell is a very active company in Turkcell job market, and uh, each year our HR department analyzing and evaluating more than fifty thousand applications. Uh, yearly, it is too much effort. I mean, in terms of uh, human effort and in terms of the making the right analysis. In order to help them in that process, we created an AI service based on the computer vision and the speech technology. Our AI service analyzes the, all the interview video uh, shot by the candidate, and it automatically creates a profile of applicant. I mean, the, the emotional status choices of words, like how much um, did he talk about the technology, how much did he talk about the, uh, the customer, etc. And the, based on this interview, actually, the evaluation, automatic evaluation, our AI service creates a report which helps uh, HR department to actually evaluate the candidate. Beautiful recommendation engine. Actually, it is very early and the most popular application of AI. As I said in the previous slide, digital services are a key part of our strategy and our customer value proposition. And the heart of AI, actually, the uh, digital services is content. I mean, you have to make your customer uh, to consume your digital contents as much as possible. So recommendation engines are the key, actually, the, uh, the key mechanism to uh, to make your customer to uh, consume more content. They are working actually a couple of different ways. The one popular way is it profiles your taste and it also profiles the content and it makes suggestions based on this match, I mean match of your, uh, your taste and the content. Another popular is uh, uh, collaborative filtering. Um, suggest the content which the similar profiles to you already enjoy but you don't touch them. Chatbots, everybody knows about this. Uh, we also have several active chatbots uh, that we are actively using. The key thing is about these two, two, two things I can say about them. One is uh, rather than creating different, different, different chatbots each time, we created a chatbot platform which you can easily create and configure your own chatbots. This is one essence. The another thing is, um, uh, the, these chatbots, uh, they are based uh, more. They, they are basically actually. Uh, uh, they are basically uh, created on the NLP technology in Turkish language. So uh, once we actually created on the OpenShift environment, you can build a different services easily based on this uh, technology. And the, the second thing is that we are trying to make our chatbots as much as possible on a um, proactive way not to uh, answer your questions about uh, your topics. Also, it, uh, it is uh, suggesting you uh, some uh, new contents or the new packages on the new tariffs uh, based on your profile. Social responsibility, it is another area that we are using our AR technology actively. This is the application uh, for autistic children to support their learning process and to help them to understand human emotions through gamification. Uh, we are now uh, uh, in the final position for the GSMA awards for that use case. Turkcell Playground. This is a great example of the data democratization through the organization. Actually, the story started like that. Uh, three years ago, as Turkcell, we decided to provide uh, online trainings with the cooperation of the university, more than 1,000 employees. We train 1,000 employees regarding data science and the different fields of the analytics and the artificial intelligence. Training part is not a big deal, but the question was that, what would happen after all these people to get their training? They needed an environment to polish their skills, to apply what they just learned, make data science without concerning about the infrastructure, environment, data access, data preparation, and the necessary software libraries. Therefore, we created a data science playground 
It is a great data democratization example throughout the organization. It's a cloud-based environment that contains all the necessary software packages, libraries for any data scientists that would need. And it's also integrated to all our internal data sources. And the, the environment is GPU supported and the uh, GPU resources can be shared automatically based on the load. This is a high level solution architecture. Uh, the, uh, it is working uh, under the OpenShift 311 and the Jupyter Hub and the Jupyter Notebook is uh, supported. OpenShift is respon actually responsible for the running Jupyter Notebook, which is assigned for each user in an uh, isolated environment. And the Python, uh, we are using mainly Python in Jupyter Notebooks. Active Directory is also supported for the identity management. Uh, persistent volume integration exists to retain data in a long period of time. And also we uh, are supporting the system with the Git plugin to share your codes and the versions easily. All the resources, I mean, it can be RAM, CPU or GPU, resources can be allocated per user basis and the GPU versus JSON in place. And we started all our analytical models into that environment. It is open source environment, and it is now uh, used for more than 200 employees in Turkcell. We talk about some use cases, then the topic comes to an environment, I mean, that, that, that enables all these use cases. And the, uh, I mean, the, what, what did we need uh, creating such use cases and the, what was our long-term focus. Uh, we have some want to do and the don't want to do. Our reasons like, I mean, starting from the don't want to do, we don't want to develop and to deploy all codes from the scratch and repeat the development trainings and the development process each and each time. We don't want to deal with the infrastructure and the environment uh, necessities uh, over and over again for each use cases. We want to create a microservice based service architecture which is, is which is very easy to integrate and to, to manage. We want to dynamically manage the software and the hardware resources and the capacity. We want to globally implement the identity and the access management. We want to integrate all our internal data sources to the system. We want our developers and the data scientists to not deal with the environment, libraries, softwares, and the hardware just to do their job. And we want to create AI services which are uh, necessarily cloud native and accessible anywhere, I mean, accessible anytime and anywhere in the world. So we, this is the also high level structure of the, our solution for the AI platform, AI cloud native platform. As you can see, we already utilize various Red Hat technologies. I have listed our reasons and the needs why we did this in the previous slide. Actually, our solution, uh, the, the, our, the preliminary finding for the, our needs was the Kubernetes. I mean, we already decided to use, I mean, we had to use Kubernetes, we say. And as a, uh, our major aim is to provide our developers to the same comfort that they working in the public cloud environments. And this, since the uh, OpenShift is the Red Hat supported version of the Kubernetes, we decided to go for the Red Hat OpenStack. At the bottom level, Red Hat OpenStack supports for the virtualization and the software defined infrastructure. And as I said in the previous slide, we use GPU based services and the resources are allocated, I mean, can be allocated for each use cases and for each users. Red Hat OpenShift is positioned and uh, as a main container platform in the Kubernetes. All our models are the Python based and we utilize some public open source libraries such as TensorFlows. Also Jira or Jenkins like technologies are in place. Uh, as I mentioned uh, previously, it is always the best to develop cloud native platforms containing AI services, I mean, which can be easily deployable, reused, flexible and scalable on the cloud. With our AI platform, our goal was to gather different product families under one roof and to make them available to all our customers in terms of uh, software, as a, software as a service. By doing this, uh, we aimed both to share our work in the field of artificial intelligence and to create new revenue channels. We basically focused on the three channels. One, our solutions should work under GPU. The second, gather different products under one roof and the sharing these GPU resources efficiently. And for all these challenges, our solutions should be containerized solutions than OpenShift. 
And with this containerized solutions of the OpenShift, we created reusable images, uh, similar structure for different services, quite scalable, quite flexible, efficient, and a high performance platform we achieved. Now I am giving the word to you, Abhinav. Hi, right, thanks a lot, Inaj. That's uh, like a lot of great work for the social good and very good use cases that you have uh, for the AI technology. Now, before I talk more about Red Hat OpenShift, I wanted to share some market data on the value of containers for improving the AI workloads. So the results that you see on the screen are from a recent survey conducted globally by the industry analyst firm called 451 Research with like hundreds of AI, uh, the companies that are implementing AI. Uh, and then what you see on the screen on the left is like more than 94% uh, of, the, of the AI doctors, they indicated that they are using or plan to use containers for their AI projects within the next one year. And the top benefits that were highlighted that are uh, like listed on the right hand side of the screen were in terms of the increased scalability, faster deployment time, improved performance, like lower cost, and then there are a few others that you can see on the screen. Can you go to the next slide, Inanj? The Red Hat OpenShift is the industry leading container and Kubernetes powered hybrid cloud platform to help accelerate the AI lifecycle, uh, be it your data center, public cloud, uh, or edge. And it provides a lot more than the fundamental value that you get with containers and Kubernetes because of a lot of capabilities that we have added into OpenShift. Uh, so what, what, what OpenShift does is it simplifies the deployment, scaling, and the lifecycle management of the containerized AI ML tool chain, such as Jupyter Notebooks, Python, TensorFlow, or even uh, commercial like, say, software from our partners like H2O.ai, Starburst, Presto, Selden, uh, and so on, by being able to automate the day one to two operations uh, uh, with these tools, and then being able to ensure the faster time to value. Now the integration with the, with the hardware accelerators, such as the NVIDIA, yeah, can you go back to the previous okay. one? Okay. Yeah, okay. the integration with the hardware accelerators, such as the NVIDIA GPUs, uh, is to ensure that the modeling and the inferencing tasks can be see, uh, can seamlessly consume a uh, GPU from, from OpenShift. And then like OpenShift with both the self-managed or a public cloud hosted option provides a consistent way to perform the day one to two operations uh, like regardless of the location where your developers and the data scientists are working on. Uh, and then they get the consistency and the portability of modeling and the application development workflows, be it the data gathering, preparation, modeling, and the deployment. Uh, and then finally, OpenShift, it helps uh, to extend the value of DevOps to the entire machine learning lifecycle and being able to enable the ML ops and the much needed collaboration between the various teams in your the AI project. And this helps, helps ensure that the machine learning models can be like, easily uh, be integrated in a, a continuous integration and the continuous deployment, continuous uh, delivery of your intelligent like, AI powered applications. And then finally, uh, so, uh, so, uh, uh, so OpenShift is a fully integrated platform that uh, includes the key capabilities like the self uh, service, monitoring, automation, the DevOps tool chain, and it's all built on all open source uh, technology. And this helps you know, drive the innovation and uh, without any kind of a vendor lock-in. Can you go to the next slide, Inaj? Yeah, and then what you see on the screen is that we have many organizations across the globe uh, with many industry verticals that have accelerated uh, the AI projects from pilot to production with Red Hat OpenShift as the underlying hybrid cloud platform. You see healthcare organizations such as HCA Healthcare, they've been able to achieve the data-driven diagnostics, and then the automotive companies uh, such as BMW are speeding up the autonomous uh, driving initiatives. Financial organizations uh, such as RBC and Discover Financial are speeding up the delivery of intelligent applications for various use cases. The Department of Agriculture, Food, and Marine are speeding up the farmer uh, grant applications. So there are like number of use cases um, and, and we heard from Inanch as well on the customer experience use cases as well. So back to you Inanch to give the closing comments and the lessons that you learned that others can benefit from. Uh, thank you. 
Okay. And final recommendations and the takeaways. Um, actually, the organizations can be different. Uh, and the different organizations, you know, they have their own uh, doing things styles. But I can uh, suggest that and I can recommend that uh, in order to have a successful result in some, inside of the organization for the, for the good use cases, your uh, artificial intelligence, data science and infrastructure teams should be uh, working in a collaborating environment. I mean, they should be collaborating together for the successful result. It is not uh, the job of the just one team. I mean, you can have a very powerful AI uh, team, but without uh, including the uh, infrastructure teams in the environment, you cannot uh, have successful results. The another thing, again and again, I am repeating, um, okay, I mean, for some use cases, it is uh, good to create, you know, tailor-made services, but the, for the most of the use cases, it is best to create reusable services rather than developing one-time solutions over and over again. So, I mean, uh, whatever you should build, whatever you build, you should build as a cloud native. And uh, also, uh, you need a containerized architecture in order to have the best scalability, in order to have the best uh, the maintenance performance and the efficiency and the service access. Um, the open shift like platforms are quite successful for this because I mean, the, uh, this is a world of uh, area of the uh, open source, and for the open source environment, they also need a good support from uh, the, the uh, successful vendor, successful partner. So I mean the. the the, with our partnership with the Red Hat and the, with the use of the Red Hat the utilization of the Red Hat technologies, which was a safe way for us. And the, I can also suggest you to stick with such, such kind of a way, uh, get a good partner. It can be, I, of course, I mean, this is the, we are talking about open shift. We can recommend it uh, since it is a end-to-end uh, -end integrated software package with the, uh, the, the many benefits that we all uh, talk about this presentation. It is a uh, the quite, uh, I mean, we can recommend it and we can say that you can stick with it. Thank you. All right, thanks a lot all. Have a great rest of the day and enjoy the show. Thank you, bye-bye.